Whew. Normally when I um I have a word that I believe is of the Lord I'll say hello Facebook. So at this moment I can't say hello Facebook. I have to say hello world. <laughs> Hello to all the nations, all the continents. I have to say this time to all that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. We've been going through a new thing. And prior to going before a new thing about um, for about six or seven months, two nineteen or twenty nineteen going into twenty twenty, the Lord had been waking me up every morning around the same time. About 3.09 a.m. every morning. And that's when the Lord introduced me to the secret place. He would have he would wake me up and I have to go out on the balcony, which is a closed-in balcony where I stay. And we, I had to go out on the balcony and the Lord had me to meet him every morning. And it would, I come to realize that it wasn't just me being religious or self righteous. Because every morning at about, at, at exactly 3 09, he would wake me. Because I remember once he started, I, I started praying, God, um, Just wake me up when you want me to get up. I don't want to set a time. And see, for those of you that have an ear to hear, I'm praying to the body. I'm speaking to the body of Christ at this moment. There is a secret place in God that we must desire to dwell. Not to visit, but there's a secret place in God that we must desire to dwell. We must desire to stay there. And so for six, seven months, the Lord had me in the secret place knowingly that I was in the secret place. And he woke me up again, like I said, every morning, same time, 3.09, I wake up like that. And there were some mornings that I didn't want to get up. I mean, I wanted to get up, but my body was tired because when you meet with the Lord and you pour out your heart and you pour out your concern and you pour, you just pour out your spirit, you empty yourself. When you, when you do that, it, it, it drains the natural body. And the Lord had me to learn 91 Psalms, all 16 verses, every dot, every comma, every period. And it was some morning that I would be so hurt and upset because I wasted so much time with my life. That this is something that I should have known. Something that I should have known other than he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's more to that. Uh, so for six or seven months, the Lord had me to meet him. In a secret place. 
and the secret place is not a place for a gathering. It's you and God. And you're exposing your self. You're exposing your concerns about you. The secret place is where you deliver your filth. Your dirty laundry. And the Lord accepts it and takes it. He, he doesn't wash the dirty laundry and fold them and press them and give them back to you. No, he gives you new clothes. He gives you a new clothes. A new cloth to wear. That's what goes on in the secret place. <sighs> I can't get all into it right now. I just had to give you where the source is coming from. It's coming from the secret place. And I left Detroit uh, 2014, moved south. And the one thing that I had to leave in the physical was my church home, which I hadn't been really active. I wasn't active like I was supposed to be. Because I was in the midst of being sift by Satan. And but God told me when I return to strengthen his brethren. But prior to all that, the Lord had been, been speaking to me as a, as a young child. My auntie said that I used to holler and scream when I wasn't able to verbally talk because I would see things and I couldn't express myself of what I was seeing. And I remember when I was about eight years old, eight, nine, so eight, eight, eight about eight years old, we were living over on the west side on 30th Street. And I was riding my bike on 28th Street. And a man was running down the street. Like the $6 million man. Black, ugly beast looking man. And I clearly heard the voice of the Lord speak to my spirit. I heard the Lord say, move into the street. Because he's going to knock you off your bike. And I didn't move at that point. I slowed down. And I heard the Lord again say, I'm telling you, you better move in the street. He's going to knock you off your bike. And I've always been a little hard. Slow to respond. Always happy. <laughs> And surely this man came closer and closer and I started going slower and slower. But why didn't I just go in the street? Why didn't I just move like in the street like he said? And a lot of times, many of us, God would speak to us. And instead of making the adjustments and instead of doing and stopping what he says, stop and do what he says, do. Instead, we, 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 we just slow down a little bit. Lord say, get rid of those cigarettes. They're going to they're gonna destroy your lungs. He doesn't mean when it's too late. Do it because it's going to happen. You say, oh, evangelist, are you saying this because you quit smoking? Yes. Yes, I am. Because God said, when you return, strengthen your breath. For the body that didn't know you, I had started back smoking again. And I didn't enjoy it. My body did, but my spirit did not enjoy it. So am I saying it? Because I quit. I'm saying it because, yes, I did. And, yes, I quit. And I started. I know it because I judged another saint that who I had seen that had fallen off. And I came back and told you, my uh, crew, my uh uh, 
confidant crew, guess who I saw? And they were smoking. And guess who was judged with the same thing I was not long afterwards? Smoking. But God says, when I tell you to do it, do something, do it. I changed his instruction. He didn't say, Renita, slow down. Because he's going to knock you off your bike and you don't want it to hurt as you don't want it to hurt too bad by going fast. He said, go into the street. But I changed the agenda. I changed the agenda. I changed the agenda. God said, go into the street. He's going to knock you off your bike word for word. I slowed down. God is saying to America, stop. Where's this coming from? I woke up to a vision this morning. And I've been asking God. I said, God, you never have given me a vision. I don't, I mean, maybe it was. I, I can't tell the difference between a vision and a dream. Okay, God, is it a dream or is it a vision? Is it a vision? Is it a dream? You know, I, I woke up to a vision and I took my glasses off. Because I wanted to make sure, I mean, it, it seemed like it was clear without the help of 2020 vision made by man. It, it seemed clear. I, it, and I'm speaking uh, literally. <laughs> Honest God, I saw the glory of God. Shekinah glory. At Holy Ghost Full Gospel Church. Detroit, I'm telling you what I saw. Nations, I'm telling you. 1745 East Grand Boulevard. It wasn't a lot that the Lord showed. It was just a I saw the glory of God. There was no one in the church. Then all of a sudden it was, it was, it was, it was, it, 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 it was, I don't know how to, it was, it, it, it it wasn't clear, crystal clear. It was like, a, I can't explain it, but it was like the, like, I don't know, the spirit of God hovering through the church. And then I saw the first, I saw Mother Lewis at the top of the church. And she was in a, it, 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 there's an opening window opening where you cross over to go when you're going upstairs or downstairs and you have to go past this window so anyone in the congregation can see whoever goes past. And I saw Mother Lewis. She was dressed in all white. And then I saw the far right of the church. There's a, a place where all the instruments are, the keyboard and the drums and the musicians. And there's a door there. And I saw all the his mothers of the church walking through. I didn't, I wasn't close up, but it was at a distance. And I knew by the spirit of the Lord that they, they were the mothers of the church. And, and they were dressed in all white and they was coming through that door. And I was trying to see more, but it, 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 it began to fade. And the Lord didn't allow me to see more. And then it, it, it allowed me to fall back to sleep. And when I woke up, it was the first thing on my mind. He said, tell my people. And I'm like, and it was like, <clears throat> excuse me. It was like my mouth was shut. And so he began to tell me to take the garbage out. And I went in the, uh, yeah, pulled the garbage thing out of my room and started emptying the garbage can. I went through the house and started emptying the garbage. And I was quiet all at the same time. Now, prior to that, earlier that morning, this morning, I woke up. It was 4.09, and I was in, God had met me in the secret place this morning, prior to the vision and all that. Because after that, I went on to bed, and and, and, and then the, the vision came, then I went back to sleep. So I asked Lord about the coronavirus. 
had been asking him about, you know, and the Lord showed me. He said the the hand the 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 hand sanitizer. He explained to me about the hand sanitizer. And he, he explained to me that this is not just for the nation, the United States. It's for the United Nations. It's for the globe. That's why the plague came. You know, but Satan is real. And he comes to, according to the word of God, John 10, 10, the, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal. He comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. Because he knows his time is coming. His end is coming. And people, God has been trying to catch the world's attention. Not just the United States. This is the world. He, he's been trying to catch the world's attention. Not just the church. This is for the whole, this is for the whole creation. CNN, ABC, NBC, Fox Network, whoever network. This is for all of us. He's been trying to get our attention. Busy. 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 And I could hear Satan going to the Lord and said, just let me put this plague out. Just like he did when he had to get permission to attack Job and God. He said, but just don't kill him. Let me put this plague out. You see that your children, they will curse you because you did such a thing. You let their loved ones die. You let their father, who's a pastor, or their father, who's a deacon, or their mother, who's a mother of the church, who's been served, you let her die. Yes, let me do this, and you'll see. The Lord allowed it. For his glory. Because he has our attention. But yet, just like in the day of Noah, I can hear the Lord say, just like in the day of Noah, many of you are still not listening. You're, have, you're still partying in the streets. When the government said, be distant, the Lord said that represent, that distance meant, meaning separate yourself. Come out from among them and be you separated, said the Lord. Coming out from the unclean thing. That's what that means symbolically. That's what it means. Separate yourselves from them who decide that they do not want to be on the Lord's side. Whose side will you choose? I hear God say. The Lord had me come across Korah's rebellion. And I read it, number 16. And the Lord had me to put it on Facebook the other day. Read 16. This is your duty, men and women of God. Read number 16. And he shows something in that about the plague and how many died and how many had to die on top of those that were in the company of Korah who decided to stay on Korah's side. The hand sanitizer represents touching the unclean thing. And when you touch the unclean thing, the government tells us to put sanitizer on. And that's true. For the physical realm is true. But God says in the spirit realm, when you touch the unclean thing, my children, repent and carry on. Repent and carry on. In the spirit realm, the blood of Jesus represents the sanitizer. The blood of Jesus is the sanitizer. And once you use that sanitizer once, once the blood of Jesus comes, once the blood of Jesus covers your life, you no longer have to pick up a bottle or search for sanitizer. You speak it. You repent. <laughs> God said, I will tell Corona virus when to go. And he's leaving. But he's not going to leave like to know you that know to know that he is God and there is no other. 
he's going to speak a word. And Corona is going to leave instantly. It's not a gradual as it may seem. It's going to be when God speaks like he told me when I was eight, nine years old, get, get, go into the street. He's not going to tell Corona to slow down. He's going to tell Corona to stop. And for those of you that are hurting and the enemy wants you to blame God because of your loved one, those of you that's in the body, God said, I, Corona didn't take it from them. I took their breath. I took their spirit, brought them home to me. Because many of them will go back out. And where there's many who still do not want to separate themselves from the unclean things. So I separated them. I took their breath, said the Lord. Corona didn't take anything from my children. I took their breath. That's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. Before I left. The Lord told me one dream, share one dream. I was cleaning out the garbage room. We clean the garbage in our household. We clean it from every room. We just take the garbage from every room and take it all out. Now, I went into Sharita's room and she had this little box on her side of her bed. And it says one dream. And I felt that was the Lord speak one dream. Oh my God. Because I'm like, God, what, what, what do I do? He one dream. It was a dream that there was a situation that that I had on when I was living on the boulevard. And I dreamed that morning. We had prayer every morning at 6 a.m. And I dreamed that morning that there was a um a man that came into my house. And me and David was there, and he pulled out a rifle and he said, I got a gun. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. And I stood up before that man and I pointed at him. I said, no weapon formed against him shall prosper. And he kept, he, he, he pulled, he shook the gun again. He said, I got a gun. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. I said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I woke up. This had to be about 530 in the morning. Morning prayer was going on. And I, that morning I was so shook up. And I had to decide I wasn't going to morning prayer that morning. To make a long story short, I went on and left and went off to school. And usually when I, I was working, I was going to school at Wayne State. And usually once I finished class, I come straight home. But my agenda changed. And I I usually wait a couple of days or next day or something before I start my homework assignment. And so I went to the library to start my homework assignment. As I did all my homework then, then I stopped at the gas station at the corner and talked to some old co-workers. And I came on home. And uh, when I pulled up, <clears throat> excuse me, I saw this man walking down the street in my rearview mirror. Now, Jonathan Adams, my brother, I knew it wasn't him, but I wanted to convince myself. I said, oh, it's Jonathan. And he walking and I'm pulled up in front of my house. My pastor lived next door. Bishop Coletta lived next door. And we had this big, wide driveway. So the, the, the man walked up to the driveway and he, this is the same. Now, listen to me, remind you, this is the same day of the dream but it was like that night now so i'm pulling up and you no know, i pulled up in front of my house and i said i know jonathan had just walked past me and didn't speak and i knew it wasn't him and then he walked up between the driveway between bishop's house and my house and he took a jacket and he put it over my porch on the side all i could see was the jacket go over but i didn't see him so me, I've never been a scary person. You know, I've never been really timid, really. Except for certain movies when I'm, you know. But I was walking up the driveway. And I said, excuse me, may I help you? This man pulled out a rifle just like in my dream. And I mean word for word verbatim. He said, no weapon. No, he said, I got a gun. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. And I pointed my, stretched my arms out before him. I said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And he began to walk kind of go to a side trying to get around me yet he pointed again i got a gun i'm gonna shoot you i'm gonna shoot you and i said no weapon formed against me shall prosper and paulette that lived a couple of doors from me she looked out what did she say renita are you all right man tucked the gun up under his arm and walked on down the street i said call the police somebody just tried to rob me <clears throat> and so instead of me taking my butt on in the house or thanking the lord that we got the victory 
He gets halfway down the street and I said, I got a 357. I'm going to shoot you. What did I do? Evangelist, what did you do? I went into the flesh. I had defeated the enemy in the spirit and I came back with, I got a gun and I'm going to shoot you. And I went into the flesh. That morning in my dream, when I told him no weapon formed against me shall prosper, I woke up. It was over. It was a done deal. But what did I do? I went into the flesh and decided I'm going to do it my way. Now, God has given me the victory. Now I'm going to do it my way. Just like on the bicycle. I'm going to do it my way. I'm not going to go into the street so this man won't knock me off my bike. I'm just going to slow down. God said it's my way or no way. I am God and there is no other. Let he that have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying. This happened in 2000. I don't even think I ever told my pastor. But it happened right there that night. We had a rock wild and I always fussed at the boys. Y'all need to start letting the boy in. Quit leaving her outside all night. This time, out of all times, they decide to let her in. So what happened when I went into the flesh? I said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go follow him. And so that the police could know which way he went. So I went all the way around West Grand Boulevard, East Grand Boulevard, around the curve to I-94, all the way back around. So there was no one around. And I, this time I, I wasn't asked, you know, I'm thinking, OK, it's over. We got the victory. Listen to me. We. He had the victory. I got out walking up my walkway. See, you have to realize cell phones wasn't, you know, popular then. Got out, walked up the driveway, and this other man came out, rushing me like I was on a football team. Well, I mean, Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> bam! Knocked me up in the air. Bam! Down to the ground. And guess what he said? Where the gun at? Where the gun at? And we fighting. I mean, I'm kicking and we fighting and if Bruce Lee wouldn't have been able to get this joker I got so tired I was out of breath it could have been avoided and I laid there and I, I got so tired just rest on my elbow and I just said do you know Jesus loves you I said you see that church that's my church I said you see that house that's my pastor's house I said Jesus loves you and he didn't say a word. Big old black. He was black, ugly. I mean, I, I can't even say ugly. He was black, blacker than black. And he was going through my things. And all he was doing, he was passing up my charge cards, passing up my wallet. He was looking for that 357 that I spoke out of my mouth. Because, see, that's what the devil does. What you speak is what he's looking for. What you speak. That's why God said, watch what you say. Your mouth, your mouth, yeah, out of the abundance of the mouth, out of the out of your mouth speaks. You're speaking the abundance of what's in your heart. That's why you got to watch what you say. You got to stop. Oh, I'm afraid of coronavirus. As long as you're afraid of coronavirus, the coronavirus is going to stay in your life. So I'm going to assume that this is it because my phone is saying that it's about to cut off. My time is up. And I think that the Lord could use the time that this thing has given. People run to God. Find your church home. 1745 East Grand Boulevard. That's a good, the, 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 It's going to never be the same again. When it's over and we're allowed to get to church, get there. Become a member. Get saved. Before going. Ask God to forgive you for your sins. He's ready for you. Stretched out arms. He's ready for you. The Lord is waiting. Jesus is waiting. This is a sign. This is a sign. This is the beginning of sorrows. The next thing will be worse. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that Lord, that you would, that he that have ear, let them hear. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will repent and do what you say and not make our own agenda. In Jesus' name.